All right, so let's do it. This is this day in baseball history for January 24th. Yes, baseball history in January. Uh, in fact, uh, just today there was baseball history, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, Kevin, I want you to bring that up. Right. So January 24th, 1931, after being released by the Indians four days ago, Alabama native Joe Sewell, who will spend the first 11 years of his career with Cleveland signs as a free agent with the Yankees for $10,000. The 33 year old future hall of fame infielder will, uh, the record holder for the most consecutive games without recording a strikeout with 115 will hit 282 during his three seasons with the New York Yankees. That is amazing. Uh, didn't strike out in 115 games. That it's sounds crazy. like Tony Gwynn level kind of stuff. You hear all right. those Tony Gwynn crazy stats. I was like, wait a minute, what's Tony Gwynn's biggest number? I'm like, I have to like, you know, you figure he's the, you figure he wants a whole season about striking out the way they make him sound nowadays. Right. Right. I, I mean, wonder how many walks he had during those. That's a good yeah. question. That's a really good question. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember there being, uh, at least back then, a lot of like intentional base on balls. Um, right. So, yeah. So, yeah, they probably went right at, at him all the time. So that, that would be interesting mm -hmm. to look up. Man, um, and, he, and he looks like a spring chicken in that photo compared to the yep. re, compared to the, <clears throat> the plaque there. He's looking yeah. old and rough. He's looking like very rugged. Yeah. For sure. I remember there was remember there was that crazy stat of like Joey Votto where he he never popped up in the infield until like right. you know like some crazy amount of years into his career. <laughs> I love stuff like that. Love stuff like that. Um I think there's in in the NFL, I think there's a there's something that's never happened in the NFL. I don't, and I, I, I hope I'm, um, I'm hope I'm even close on this one. I think it's like someone blocking a point after attempt and then returning it for a touchdown. Um, it's, I, I don't think it's ever happened in the NFL. There's something crazy like that. I'm, I, I hope, I hope that's even close to it. But there, there's something. I've always wanted to just every time I watch an NFL game, I always like, oh, this could happen. You know, it's like and I would think it's more possible now because the extra point is so much further back. You know, right, I mean? right. I'm sure on like two point conversions, it's probably happened because you know that's it's an offensive play as well as just kicking the ball and just trying to right. block it, whatever. But yeah, but it's it's I, I think it's never happened in in NFL history. So um, I'm like, is this the time that's going to happen? But uh, yeah. All right, so. January 24th, 1939, needing an additional player to reach the initial goal of having at least 10 inductees before the dedication ceremonies this summer, members of the Baseball's Writers Association of America elect Wee Willie Keeler, George Sisler, and Eddie Collins to be in the inaugural class of the Hall of Fame. Now, when I first read this, this was kind of interesting because I'm like, this is a little misleading what the way they kind of write this. Yeah. Yeah. So it says the three players are chosen, uh, are joining the 1936 selection of Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Hannes Wagner, Christy Mathewson, and Walter Johnson, along with Nat LaJoye, uh, Tris Speaker, <clears throat> Cy Young, uh, selected by their writers a year later. Right. But... Yeah, they're saying 10? Yeah, because yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. okay. So so this picture is all of the Hall of Fame's living members, except for oh, Ty okay. Cobb. Okay. Um, this is on June 12th, 1939 in Cooperstown. But this so is the, the weird okay. this is the weird wow. thing. So 36, mm -hmm. Ty Cobb, Walter Johnson, Christy yeah. Mathewson, Babe Ruth, Hannes Wagner. Mm -hmm. So that's five. But in 37, um, Nap LaJoye, Connie Mack, who's in yeah, the yeah. I see Connie Mack there. Yeah, I definitely yeah. recognize Connie Mack. John McGraw, Tris Speaker, uh, George Wright, and Cy Young. So that's, that's 37. Yeah. Right. So in 38, because I, I was like, did they skip two years or what, what was the oh. deal? So like in 38 was Grover Cleveland Alexander. Oh. Um, and then uh, uh, Alexander Joy Cartwright, which I'm not familiar with. Uh, he was, I think, one of the guys who helped. 
uh, he was like a manager or like he was something involved, I think, off the field of baseball, if I remember right. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So behind the scenes kind of stuff. And then Henry Chadwick. So there's three right there. But then 39. So get this. So it says like, it, it, you know, they Those needed three extra three players. But so <clears throat> in 39 was Cap Anson, Eddie Collins, Charles Comiskey, Candy Cummings, Buck Ewing, Lou Gehrig. Willie Keeler, Haas, right. uh, old Haas Radborn, yeah, George right. Sisler, and Albert Goodwill Spalding. So, <laughs> I, so this whole thing was like I, I was like, w- w- they needed ten. Like so, maybe maybe this was all before any yeah. separated. What I'm it. guessing is the building may not have been ready yet in '36. <laughs> that that's what it was. So, so in '39, it finally opened. Right. Right. But I didn't know, but the way they made it sound like nothing happened in 37 and 38. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Weird. so, but this is a, this, I mean, this is an awesome picture. Uh, yeah. Great picture. When you're going through that list, I'm like, are they mean 10 players? Because you did mention like Connie Mack. Well, Connie Mack played and man. So that doesn't even really even work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it's kind of misleading. Uh, so um, again, I just, why we do the research and try to figure these these things out or and just figure I, out who, whatever whoever made that information you know available about this day in baseball history like what the heck do they mean by yes that? we're okay. we're, we're oh, fact checkers here <laughs> love it love it oh and and then today kevin baseball oh. history happened today for the hall of yeah, fame yeah there we go i mean i i was surprised i heard people talking about it, but i didn't think he was gonna hall of fame but there you go scott Rowland got voted in so it's gonna be scott Rowland and fred mcgriff going to the hall yes. of fame this year uh, Todd Helton just barely, just barely, barely missed out. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was... There's some other players. <laughs> if you look at their stats, are a little better. Just a little better. I'll yeah. just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't. Never... I... Go ahead. And they may never get, they, they're not, the only way they'll get in is like some of those other guys are going to be by the players for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The writers are way too I, 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 picky. I, I don't know because. It's amazing how historically, like, no one has ever gotten in unanimously. There's people who say, I will not vote for someone on their first year no matter what. Right. You know? Right. Like, really? Well, <laughs> really? That, that actually comes up oh. in this day in baseball history. Night, good foreshadowing. There you go. So January 24th. Uh, this is 1955. <laughs> this is a weird one, but a funny one. But uh, isn't that William Daniels on the left? <laughs> there's your there's your deep cut right there, Michael. <laughs> Not that that is a huge, but no, that is Cubs business manager Jim Gallagher, who oh. is the chairman of a nine man rules committee. Um, he announces that the two leagues will implement an existing rule during spring training that requires a pitcher to throw a ball when the bases are empty within 20 seconds of taking a pitching position. Uh, the mandate, which results in umpire calling a ball when, um, when tosses are tardy, uh, will not be in, in effect during the season. So, you can go back to 1955 <laughs> that these pitchers were on a clock. They wanted to speed up baseball. A yes. clock. Come on. Like the umpire is really counting. Come on. Jeez. You know, you know what they could have used? They could have used maybe like some kind of like, well, it wouldn't exist back then. I was maybe some kind of mechanical <laughs> thing, like a like what, like a kit or something like that that would have a voice that would sound like William Daniels. Uh, I'm just William Daniels joke, sorry. <laughs> Just something mechanical, just like this. Announce the, you know, to announce. Keep track of the clock. I mean, do we have? I mean, how how big were electronic scoreboards even back then in the fifties? Probably not even really a thing, right? Well, if you remember, um, I want to say it was like even like in the Olympics, didn't they have like the the? It was like the 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 clock yeah, with the, the like clock, the, yeah, yeah yes. with the hands and stuff like yeah, that. With the hands, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that could have happened. I, I, I don't remember. Happened. Yeah, we had to be getting close to electronic clocks around this time period, though, for sure. Yeah, you're you're probably already. Right. You think yeah. I would know I was around for all this stuff. <laughs> so January 24th, 1973, Warren Spahn becomes the only the sixth player elected to the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility, receiving 316 of the 380 uh, <clears throat> votes cast by the baseball writers. Uh, that's 83%. Um, oh 
the Buffalo, New York native who recorded 13 20 win seasons with the Braves, retired as the winningest left handed left handed pitcher mm -hmm. in big league history with 363 victories. A remarkable feat given he recorded his first victory at age 26. Wow. That is nuts. Oh my gosh. He is wow. Yeah. He was 363 and 245. Can you imagine? That's that's, that's crazy. No, yeah, can you imagine? He still only got like 83% of the vote. Yes. Yeah, but yep. like he I think he's fourth all time for wins. Well, yeah. maybe the top 10 pitcher of all time and still four fifths, one fifth of the voters are like, no. Yes. 2,500 strikeouts. His ear, his career ERA was 3.09. He was a 17 time all-star. Not good enough. World series champion. Cy Young award winner. Not good enough. Eight times NL uh, wins leader. Not good enough. <laughs> Can you imagine? How, how do you not say that? It's like three time ERA leader, four time national league strikeout leader, pitched two no hitters. His Atlanta Braves 21 is retired. He's in the Braves Hall of Fame. He's uh, on, also on the MLB All-Century team. Oh, yeah. He absolutely should be. Yeah. And you know what's funny now? So we said 30, 30. I don't know what year they started electing. Let's just say 36 and the Warriors started voting. We're almost 40 years in. And how many players you say was first year of eligibility? He's the uh, what? The sixth or seventh? That's six. Ever six. Yeah. Six. Only six players yeah. in their first year. That tells you I'm 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 not gonna promo on these writers, but <laughs> I wish Cowboy Jack was here to cut the promo for me. But then yeah. it's it's you know what that is? It's hogwash. I'll tell it's you what ho it is. It's right hogwash, there. yes. <laughs> <clears throat> I will agree with you. Yeah. Warren Spawn definitely did not celebrate it enough. And I, I no. love I, you know what? I think it's also like he was right before TV, maybe like people didn't, didn't I mean, see him on TV he, or but if you look, he, so if you go by that, he would have finished up his career in about 67, uh, you know, 65. Usually, so oh, I thought, geez, I thought you're on the ballot five years after you retire. That's why I was like wondering. if this Oh, anything. interesting. Well, um, so he, he was on the Mets, on, Mets in 65 and Giants in 65. Okay. Yeah. I think it's seven or eight years. Yeah, I, 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 maybe they changed it later to five. I thought it's five mm -hmm. years retired now. I thought it was like I, th I thought at one point it might have been ten. I might be no, wrong. It's, not, it's not ten. I know it's not ten. I, yeah, I thought it was, it was five, but don't don't quote me on that. Well, maybe, but, uh, maybe and again, and this card here, I think I think that's fifty six. I think that yeah. card's a beautiful card though. Yeah, and, and he and I actually did get to meet him at card shows a couple times back in the eighties, and such a a great guy too. He's just very happy to just meet the fans, talk about them, and I'm like. That's where you gotta love those old Hall of Famers who just were like, "Hey, you know what? You know, talk yeah. to you as opposed to other more of current players back in those days." And be like, "Yes, yeah, you. exactly, right, yeah." I think I think the ten, um, y you fall off and you go into that secondary category. I okay. think that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, super super cool. Uh, Warren I'm Spawn. It, I'm giving. I'm taking a drink for Warren Spawn. Yeah, we might have to add Absolutely. him to the. Uh, to the to our uh, diamond icons. I mean, he's definitely worthy of it. Might have to do some more digging. It's on only him. Hall of Fame worth anything right now. <laughs> You're absolutely right on that one. Or, I mean, hey, if if, if Morgana uh, can't crack our, our our diamond icons, I I mean, it's like it has to be the elite. <laughs> you got to be the elite out there. Uh, I can't believe Morgana might fall off the ballot. Uh, oh, come on now. I think she just has to be there as, as forever, forever. Yes. We're, we'll get her in even if it's 20 years from now. There we go. <laughs> so this is an interesting one. January 24th, 2001, 68 Major League umpires participate in a preseason session believed to be a historical first to practice calling strikes as defined by the rule book. So guys, what, what is the strike as defined by the rule book? I mean, I, because I, it, it might be the wrong angle, but you know, I think you're supposed to point to your, to your right. <laughs> no, the actual strike zone. What, what is the strike, oh, the strike zone? zone. I'm sorry. Oh. I thought you said calling a strike. I was like, isn't it like what the umpire signals? No, not I the mean, signal, but the actual, the what, actual what is an strike. actual strike as defined by the rule book? Oh, okay. So a ball that would be in the, 
Oh God. The batting zone, which would be between the player's shoulders and knees and over the plate. Is that close yeah, enough? You- you're 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 very close, but it's it's actually changed. Uh, Angela, what is what is what is your definition of it? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I Kevin sounded pretty good. I believed him. <laughs> I, I didn't make that up. <laughs> so, so I'll finish this out, but I I, I want to continue this conversation because it, it actually it got me thinking, and and when you see these diagrams, you'll you'll understand a little bit better. But uh, at this time, with the help of minor leaguers wearing tape nine inches above their belts. The oh. men in blue get a good look at pitches commonly called balls, but are strikes when proper enforcement of the zone is put into place this upcoming season. So, so let's, let's look at this a little bit. So this is very interesting. So 1950, 63, 69, 9, 88, and 96. Look at all those strike zones wow that's just in the last uh, 70 years oh, yeah God. but i kept on seeing this thing if you look on the under 1996 hollow beneath the kneecap i kept on seeing that as a definition of what does that mean i have no idea i've never heard of that until now and it's actually I, pretty common okay it's just just that i guess that little divot at the bottom right before it goes to your shin bone yeah know, that's weird because How do every, you even like determine that? Oh I don't God. know. And it's, it's, so it's different on every person, which you'll see. And then remember like the high strikes, like anything above the belt, like people groan about, but actually in this case, I've always heard, um, you know, when I started playing, it was exactly what it is in 69, which was the armpit was actually below the uh, and, armpit. And if you, and you got to think about this too. So, you know, 63 was the shoulders to the knees and I'm sure, and this is obviously intentional for 69, because you remember too, Michael, 1968 was considered the year of the pitcher. That's right. You had Danny McClain get 30 wins. Bob Gibson had like, he won like 20, over 20 games. His ERA was like under two. So right. that's the year they lowered the um, the pitching mound too, am I correct? Right. right. They lowered the pitching mound, and, they, and I didn't even realize they made the change until I saw the year, but then they lowered, they shrunk the strike zone to make it maybe more beneficial for the batter. That's you right. Know? That's and right. Because I think they're trying to get more offense in baseball. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when when this is what I think the strike zone is, and this was actually, I think this one was from like the 94, like this graphic was from like 94. And I'm like, this is what basically uh-huh. what the strike zone is, in my opinion. Uh, actually, it's probably now dropped a little bit lower because now pitchers are able to like – have ball come in at di- different angles. So I think it's dropped down. That, that's the ho- hollow below the, the knees. Uh, but if you look at this, this is very interesting too. If you look at a guy named, like Altuve, and then you look at Aaron Judge, yeah. his his area is like bigger, but it's actually higher up. You know, so it's actually the strike zone is actually higher. <laughs> and, and then I started thinking about this. I'm just like, how is anything called a ball or a strike these days? <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and again, it's just like how uh, the umpire has to, you know, how's the umpire calling that? You know, yeah. he has to like literally, was he have to look up the guy and just look at the cell and try to figure it out as the balls are coming in, you know? Yeah. That's what makes it interesting too, where now, in the, I don't know when it originally started, but in the last few years, you see that grade, the umpires get graded, you know, on how they do. It's just like, oh my gosh. And uh, that's where you're like, oh my God, some of these guys are getting the high 90%. So I'm like, that's pretty impressive. Yes. You know? Yes. And you can see like the, the difficulty of this, it's, it's not like black or white on this one. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting to see like the kind of the evolution of it. And I was watching this one, uh, it was, I was on Twitter and there was a, an umpire, his name was Eric Gregg and Eric Gregg was um, definitely he was definitely one of those umpires that was shunned for his. Um, he he looked a lot like a rerun from uh, what's happening, and uh, he, and players how, called him as much. Hey, how about uh, maybe for even more modern? How about how about I go a more modern sitcom? How about um, oh shoot, is it the the dad from Family Matters or yes, maybe yes. or maybe Rock, who is also the guy who helped Do- wow. uh, Bruce Willis and Die Hard? You yes. know, I think just like you know this larger guy and just yeah. like. You know, I, I think it's, yeah. 
but the strikes he was calling was like <laughs> ridiculous. Yes, they were they were not even in the zone, and uh, but it was again it was a different time and and uh, different camera angles too. But yeah. but still, it, they were definitely outside. Yeah, of that guy was definitely. Uh, what's the umpire? Of, oh, he's like he's like the Angel Hernandez of the nineties. Yes, he, <laughs> yeah, he was definitely the Angel Hernandez of his day. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I thought this was uh, super interesting to uh, we should definitely deep dive on this a little bit more because um, uh, you can see here it's, it's obviously the, the playing fields are, are different for every batter. And actually, I remember there was actually a thing with Ricky Henderson. Uh, right. Oh, no, someone talked about Ricky Henderson. You know, he crouched down so much. So where is his strike zone? Right. If, if he could stand up, it would change. And if he would crouch down, it would be different. Pete Rose, same right. thing. Yep. So yeah, there's, it's actually, it's, it's kind of, umpires don't get, uh, their, their, um, don't get their due here. The actually of what they do call a strike. So, um, I think everybody wants it to be consistent and it's obviously every player is different. So, uh, very interesting. It, it definitely a discussion. We should definitely continue. <laughs>